All right, here we go again, boys and girls. This is assignment 4C. This is, uh, again, uh, linear regression and correlation coefficient. Uh, so we have some uh, formulas that we're going to have to fulfill, and most of the heavy lift in the lifting is done right here in this sample correlation coefficient. Uh, so to get this ball rolling, uh, let's go ahead and enter our things into our calculator. Uh, so we have our X. And our Y. And what we're going to do is we are going to begin by creating the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree. So let's do it in green here. N, some X, some X squared. Some y, some y squared, some xy, x bar, y bar. All right, so just looking at my list right now, I can see that there are six total pairs of uh, numbers. Everything else I kind of have to kind of do some grunt work. So we have the sum of x sum of x squared sum of y sum of y squared sum of x y X bar is the average of X, so I already added them up. That's two or three divided by the number of numbers. And the average of Y, so that's 34 over 6. Okay, so that is the Christmas tree. <laughs> How that helps me out is it helps me create my mini formulas a little bit easier. My mini formulas being n uh, sum xy minus sum x sum y and sum x squared minus sum x squared and sum y squared minus sum y squared. And so this very top formula, again, put them in parentheses, is n x y minus x y. The next one is n x squared minus x squared. Last but not least, I have n y squared minus y squared. So we're getting closer and closer. And then we go to the big formula itself. So R, I begin with the denominator, so that's n sum x squared minus sum x squared, n sum y squared minus sum y squared. Uh, so in essence, I'm going to get these and I'm going to multiply them together in that square root. So and this top is n sum xy minus sum x sum y. So putting the numbers in place, um, what this is going to be is uh, 5, 9, 8, 1, 92, all in the 7, 18. 
And again, what I actually do, I'll, I'll again hint you in on how I actually make this calculation. Okay, what I first do is I multiply these inside numbers of this denominator. So I begin by multiplying the denominator, the insides together. Okay, this will get some answer. Okay, what I'm going to do with that answer is I need to square root that answer. So I first multiply them, get that answer. And then I square root that answer, so that'll be the denominator. So what do I do with that answer? Well, I take 718 divided by that. Okay, so this is kind of like the math, mathy, what I do to get this answer. So as I said, I take the denominator and multiply it without the roots, just the straight up numbers, that'll be some big number. And then that's what I square root. Okay, so that's in essence the denominator. Now I can take the 718 divided by that bottom. <clears throat> All right, uh, next we have X bar and Y bar, that's right from the Christmas tree. Now we have these two formulas, this one is asking for A, which is Y bar minus B is X bar, but I need the B. So that's actually where I start is the B formula. The B formula is the N sum X, Y, N sum X sum Y, N sum X squared, N sum X squared. Again, these are just parts of your mini formula. So that is what, 718 and 5981. That's B. Back up to A. Which is Y bar. Minus B X bar again when I plug this number in I need to say answer I don't type in point one two zero zero. Last but not least, I find the equation of the least squares line. So this is y hat is equal to a plus bx. So I replace just the letter a and b, but all the other variables stay as variables and where they're at. So the a came out to be 1.6051, and b was 1200. Um, let me kind of talk a little bit about what the heck these numbers mean. Like, so we've been doing this math stuff, and but why? What? What are we doing? How? What is this doing? All right? And I kind of alluded to you yesterday, uh, or last uh, picture that 
This right here is just a scatter plot. It's a scatter plot. We have these x coordinates, and we have these y coordinates, and we could technically plot these dots out, making a scatter plot. All right? Now, an equation of a line, which typically looks like y is equal to mx plus b, where you have uh, the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, so you plot the y-intercept and you rise and run, and you rise and run, and rise and run, and then you get this, this line from an equation of some sort. Okay? That's what an equation of a line is. Well, we have this exact same equation of a line, however, it's written just a little bit differently. Our equation is y hat is equal to a plus bx, where the slope is the letter b and the y-intercept is the letter a. So it's just written a little bit backwards. It's kind of like saying this is b plus mx kind of idea. So what, what we have here in this equation, if I were just physically to graph this thing, I would have a y-intercept of 1.6. I would have a y-intercept of 1.6. And it has a slope of uh, 0.12. So that's like a rise of 12 for a run of 100. Uh, it would be kind of like, I don't know, this ballpark ish. It's a slope. It's a, you can do it next time. So uh, that is kind of what this did. Now, this is an equation of a line, as I'm describing. And so if this was originally a scatter plot, this line, this equation that we have right here, is the mathematical perfect line of best fit. It's mathematically perfect. Okay, but even though it's mathematically perfect, does that imply that all the dots are actually on the line? Right? No. No is the e easy solution to that. No. All the dots are not on the line. It's a prediction. It's the best prediction. But still, how good of a prediction is this? And that's where this uh, this first question comes into play, this correlation coefficient, R. All right, uh, let me get, get a new screen. Okay, so let's say that I have a, a scatter plot that looks like, actually, let, let's make it really good. Okay, let's say that that's my scatter plot. And so I do all this calculation, and this is the line that they say is uh, the, the line of best fit. Now, wow, that's really accurate. A lot of those dots are right on the money. Uh, it, it's pretty close, and it's a good prediction of where dots would be. That's really, really good. Okay, now compare that to a scatter plot that might look like this. And so again, I um, plug and chug into my calculations, and let's say it comes up with a, a line that says that. Mathematically perfect. It's the best we can get our hands on. Okay. Now, it will give you an answer regardless of what you put it. But just because it's mathematically perfect, does that mean it's good? Does that mean it's accurate? No. Just because it is mathematically perfect does not mean it's accurate. All right? And so what this number is, this R value, okay, that R value right there, what does that mean? Well, it's a scale kind of on the goodness of your prediction. And the scale is from zero, which is awful, to one, 
which is perfect. So it's on a scale from zero to one. Zero being awful, one being fantastic. So if I were to kind of guess what these uh, values are of the two pictures here, this, I, uh, the one, the red line, I would uh, bet is pretty bad. So that would be something like point one, two, four, nine, or something like that. A really low number, a number that is pretty close to zero. Where this blue line is freaking fantastic. This is something like nine, six, five, two, or something like that. A really big number, a number that's close to the number one. And so what this is saying is the red line is bad and the blue line is good. Now, the last thing that we have to kind of take into account is the sign that is on this. What I mean is, is it positive or negative? That, that's what I'm implying. So we're still on a scale from zero to one. And th these numbers are both positive. If it were be the um, right over here. What if this were my line right here? Or this was my scatter plot. And I plug and chug, and this says this is the line, and this is the line. Again, this number is really accurate. This number is really bad. Something like that, but because this correlation goes downhill, this will be a negative. And this correlation again goes downhill, so this would be a negative. So there would be a positive or negative on the R, but it's still on a scale from zero to one. All right, let's go ahead and knock the second problem out. Many formulas.
And now the big formula. the numbers together, so that's 192 and 124, okay, square root that, and then take the top divided by, divided by the bottom. So we see that this line, whatever the equation is going to be, is decent, it's pretty good, it's not great, great, but it's, it's pretty good. Like, in comparison to the first one, this first one is fantastic. Wow, this has a value of 0.96. That's really close to the number one. That's great. Where this one has a point of 0.7194. Again, which is decent, but it's not as good as 0.96. Okay, X bar and Y bar coming right from the Christmas tree. A and B. And all I do is replace the letter A and B of the formula, but the Y hat and the X stay the same. So this technically has a Y intercept of 83 and a slope of just a little bit more than a half. 